that to avoid the problems that you are mentioning. All and right. we are still in that preparation state. When we are nearer there, we'll announce you and say we are nearer. We are nearer. We are about to approach that, that, that right. area. Okay. Um, following this white paper, green paper, uh, Anthea, is this to Toent? They still uh, have to table be an number egg, two. by the way. Peter? Table number two. There's a question she's going to ask you specifically, and then you can ask, answer her directly on that. Uh, morning, Minister. Anthea Towart from Alexander Forbes Health. I think my question relates to the previous um, question that yeah. was asked, and it is when can we expect the white paper on NHI to be released, and when can we expect some indication on the financing of NHI from National Treasury? Thank you. You might remember that when the Minister of Finance read the budget, he actually announced that the white paper is ready we are waiting for the financing of NHI from Treasury because they are going to be released at the same time. The financing cannot be done by us because I'm not the one who's responsible so for So it's Treasury financing. that's delaying this? No, no, it's not Treasury that's yeah. delaying. <laughs> we are working with them, both of us, because, you see, we have developed the white paper. The white paper and the financing must talk to each other. So in marrying them, of yeah. course, we come from health. In his speech, and they come from Treasury. So in his speech, he says it's going to be ready on the Thursday. And this is a few weeks down the line, if I remember correctly. Did he correctly. say on the Thursday? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about that. I just know that we agreed that when we are ready, both of us you will. will release them simultaneously. Because we don't want one talking against the other. I don't want a concept. So on the white paper, what you will say, but on the financing, this concept differs with the one from Treasury. You see, so you see, before or after the elections? I, we wanted to do it before elections, actually. Okay. We wanted to do it before elections because there's no reason why it's we should delay. wait. Uh, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, table 17, is that Dire? Uh, good morning, Minister. I just want to know, uh, in the NHI dispensation, will there be any room or relevance for the uh, uh, Medical Schemes Act? in the single, single peer system? Well, you see, those, those questions have not yet been answered clearly. Mm. They've not yet been answered clearly because it's for South Africans to decide. I've already told you. Yeah. NHI is a healthcare financing system that will cover everybody, whereas medical schemes cover only those who are well-to-do. Now, in that situation, when you put a scheme that covers everybody, the question is going to be asked, what happens to the private medical schemes? Some people might like to keep it together with this particular scheme. We can't dictate to them. Mm -hmm. Some might like to get both. Others might like to say, look, because this, this is, if it must work, it must be mandatory. All NH, I mean, universal health care systems I know are mandatory, like you, you do have it in Britain. If there is anybody there who's keeping their own medical yeah. schemes, I don't know. But this is what South Africans will have to decide. Okay. But that we need that healthcare financing system that covers everybody. It shouldn't be for debate okay. because it's in the constitution of the country. All right. Talking about medical aid, Spoon Gubani says, why are we paying so much on GEMS medical aid? This is too much for us public servants. We used to pay much less. The medical scheme members will never pay less for medical schemes if you check the, the premium, and it's one of the problems why we need NHI. The premium for medical schemes have been increasing at more than consumer price index, but the benefits have been decreasing. I'm sure members who have got medical schemes here will know. The premium you pay per month is rising at more than consumer price index, but your benefits are coming down, and some medical schemes are collapsing. The main reason about that, the main one, and people are arguing that uh, I'm, 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 I'm not correct on this yeah. and it's going to be proven even legally. The main reason is that if you look at the cost of private health care, it's moving at more than the rate of inflation. And because of this argument, the Competition Commission has set up a public market inquiry. That is going to be ch is chaired by, not going to be because it's already there, is chaired by former Chief Justice Ngobo with five other people. We even got 
a very, very experienced health economist from Netherlands is going to be part of that commission. Any member of the public is going to present to that commission. That commission has got power to, to, to subpoena, even receipts and, okay. and invoices All to right. check whether the way people have been charged. If you think the way you have been charged uh, uh, for a particular problem or a disease is unfair, you can take it to that commission. Now, medical aids are saying we are forced to increase your premium to pay more. Because when we go to pay for you after being treated, the costs are escalating. In fact, in some circles, we believe the private health care in South Africa is being Americanized. Not, not Europeanized, Americanized. In other words, the system we are following is what is being followed in America, which puts America in this trouble in which it is. If you look at Europe, they are not following that system where healthcare is so extraordinarily expensive. It's America that is in that corner, and unfortunately, South Africa is following that wrong model of what American What makes it expensive? How do we get? I mean, there should be a value to, I go to a doctor, I've got a problem with my foot. There should be, I guess, a standard of how much that should cost. That's exactly the problem, Peter. We don't have that. And that's exactly what we need to set up. And this commission is going to help us to benchmark that. In other words, the commission is going to de determine is private health care extremely expensive in the country? I, as the Minister of Health, my answer is yes. But the private health care doesn't agree with me. They believe I'm over-exaggerating. Okay. That commission led by the judge must come with an answer. Is the minister over-exaggerating? Is he lying? If I have to put it in clearer terms. Am I lying? Because I believe, I actually called it the law of the jungle. Okay. That if, if you go there and ask, how much does a Caesar cost? They won't easily tell you. Because they are going to make you enter the hospital and charge you later. And show you, you right. use the needle here, you use five needles here, you know. Even those not used by you, by the doctors. If they, if, <laughs> yes, if they put a drip and they fail, you get charged for that. Okay. Yes when All they right. put the second so, one. So, so that is what that the judge must determine. Should okay. it happen in this manner, or is there a better way of doing it? Okay. Are you going to be Minister of Health after May? <laughs> Sorry? Are you going to be Minister of Health after May? I don't know. At the pleasure of the President? I don't know. Would you and like the voters, to be? Firstly, the, at the pleasure of the voters, and then at the pleasure of the President. Okay. So I can't answer that question now. All right. We, we're running out of time. We've probably got about a minute and a half, but I, I would like you to talk about uh, two things that have happened recently. The HPV vaccine, is that a game changer? Very briefly. Oh, it's a big game changer. Cancer of the cervix of the uterus affects 6,000 women every year. Unfortunately, 80% of them are African women. With the best care in the world, 3,500 will die of that disease. And women who are HIV positive are five times more likely to get that cancer. With our high prevalence, you can imagine. Now we have drawn a line in the sand and say from okay. this year, from yesterday, backwards, all the girls who are nine years old, and those who are eight, one, even those who are still not yet born. All of them, when they are in grade four, they must go through the vaccine. We believe that vaccine will be a game changer. That's what we launched yesterday. The grade four girls who are vaccinating in South Africa are half a million now. By the end of April, we'll have finished the half a million. We'll give them a second dose in September. Okay. From there, every year, any All child right. in the Republic that goes through grade four in public schools will get this vaccine. We believe it will be a game changer in All the right. long run. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. But the other thing, of course, was the implant on contraceptive implant, which is going to, uh, which is rolling another out Another game well. changer. All right. But That's we'll, another game changer. Another opportunity we'll get to chat about that. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been the Health Minister, uh, Dr. Aaron Muswaledi, sharing his thoughts with us about the state of health uh, in our country and the plans for the future. So. And that's where we're going to leave this particular conversation. Thank you very much for being a, a part of it. And uh, we certainly look forward to, to joining you again and listening to your questions.